Now, like I have the last speaker and I'm so excited to host Dr. Joyce Azam. We met in 2007. We went caving in 2007, like 13 years ago. And now I'm hosting you because I've been following you for the past 13 years. You were achieving, putting the Lebanese flag. That's the best moment for me. Lebanese flag on every summit in all continents and always like motivating uh, everywhere in the world. Joyce, the screen is yours and the time is yours. Thank you for joining. Thank you, Andre. I am super, super, super happy to connect with you tonight from Dubai. Um, yani I'm uh, like really 13 years. I, I, you just reminded me of those years when I started actually going hiking and I started with Paleo Club du Liban caving and it was literally my start and after 13 years I could climb the highest summit in the entire world. I even, you know, like sometimes it's like, how did I do it? And tonight I'm gonna tell you how, like what is my strategy, what, uh, what is still today, every day. It's a daily strategy more or less and monthly and weekly. Uh, this is what I did to make things happen in my life. So I will start well, um, with sharing my screen. <laughs> Go ahead. Voila. So tonight I will share with you guys the mountain turtle strategy. And this is me, the mountain turtle, Joyce. <laughs> Hello. So from living in a, in a bunker uh, to the top of the world, I'm, I'm going to share with you the strategy and a little bit uh, of my story. So literally, I had no permission to dream because of my gender and my social class. But I dreamt big, like literally as big as the map of the world. So in 2012, exactly, I put the map of the world and I decided this is my dream and I'm going to climb every mountain, like every, like the highest mountain on each continent. Every mountain, maybe. <laughs> like until now, I climbed 30 other mountains around the world, but we'll never know. But this was my goal. So I had a specific goal. And for this goal, I created a timeline, a plan, how I'm going to train, depending on the mountain, its technicality, the difficulty. So there's many parameters that I considered, I took into consideration in order to, you know, accomplish or, or, or achieve this specific goal, which is the seven summits. And by the way, I, I, like a few months ago, I was reading like there's only 400 people who did the seven summits, men and women around the world, and less than 75 women. I mean, I mean, Andre met me in 2007, and I was barely, you know, learning how to walk uh, or how to, uh, how to walk in a cave or how to hike. But after all these years, in uh, uh, on 23rd uh, of May 2019. I made history and I became the first Lebanese woman to climb Everest and the seven summits. It's a big challenge as I, I mean, out of nearly 8 billion people around the world, only 400 did it. Um, but Everest or the summits, the seven summits wasn't like, weren't really just my dream. I wanted also to go and um, do my master's degree in Europe. I'm an architect. I studied architecture at the Lebanese uh, university and I wanted to do a PhD. I wanted to teach this, like when I, 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 I was at university, I was looking at all these professors and I was like, oh, I, one day I want to become uh, that person teaching. And I did. I did also in these uh, thir you know, <laughs> along these 13 years. Actually, I got scholarship to do two master's degree in Rome, Perugia, and then in, in Italy, and then a full scholarship to do my PhD also at La Sapienza, Italy. How did I do all of this? Traveling to 26 countries around the world, um, enjoying a life with, outside the uh, like nine to five, uh, uh, you know, like uh, uh, time, like the nine to, uh, to five job. Since 13 years, I don't have a nine to five job. I, I created my own um, work. I created my own opportunities. How? This is, 
So this is me, um, like holding the candle. This is my family. I come from a very modest family. Uh, I live in Dequene in Lebanon. I mean, it's like the su northern suburbs of Beirut. Um, this is me when I was completing five years old. I don't know if I look like her still, <laughs> but this is how my city looked like. And with war, and I don't wanna talk a lot about this because still Beirut is suffering until the moment, but like having a childhood, this is what I wanna say, like, like living through like your childhood, living it in a war, it creates interruption, interruption between your city, interruption between your uh, ancestors, interruption between culture, inter many interruption. And this would really slow you down. Um, but, and another thing that was like I, I had as an obstacle and it challenged me in my childhood, um, I really didn't like uh, how I looked because at the end, uh, like after many years, I understood that I have a syndrome called hypermobility syndrome in my joints. So I don't know if you can see at your screen, like my joints would really, are more flexible than any other person. So my problem was not here, but in my knees where my joint will go backward. And this was the physical challenge, but the psychological challenge was when I was a kid that I was bullied and all the kids thought that I'm an alien because my, <laughs> my knees would look super, I mean, not super different, totally different. And my posture was really embarrassing. So I learned to hold my knees in the normal position like everyone. And I suffered every day to just look like all the kids until, you know, I just understood what's happening. But how the men, like the, like the, the mountains entered my life, right? Like what's the connection? So this was my childhood until 13 years ago, when I met Andre at the cave, that was my first year, 2006, 2007, where I met the Lebanese mountains. And Lebanese mountains are literally my mentors. They made me fall in love with mountains. And it's not just that, like after all these years, mountains are my joy. So I believe like as human beings, we are always in pursuit of happiness, of like, like how I'm gonna, you know, be happy. Uh, should I get this car? Should I get this apartment? What should I do to be happy? And for sure, the society dictated us into a specific, specific system that I cracked somewhere, somehow, uh, 13 years ago, and because I found my joy. Having a childhood that has a lot of stress, fleeing from place to another, living in a bunker, um, studying uh, on the candlelight, like a lot of adversity. I, when I went to the mountains, I was like, oh my God, this is the place I want to be. This is the place I, so this gave me this drive to, you know, go like make things happen in my life and success started loading in my life, literally. And for sure, there's a recipe, and today I really wrote in a way. I don't know if you're gonna uh, under like um, if it's super clear, but I re this is my recipe for making things happen. Uh, but don't worry, I'm, we're gonna go um, slowly but surely through the recipe. Uh, the first ingredient: enthusiasm. And what I mean by that, uh, it's practicing gratitude every day. And it's not about like, oh, thank you, God, I am here today. No, no, it's not about, oh, I'm grateful to, uh, I don't know, have this house or, or having this meal, but it's much more. And I experienced gratitude through the eyes of my friends. And, and when I, I, I don't know, make hummus, uh, when, when I was living in, in Italy, and uh, I have this friend coming back and hugging me, Joyce, that was so good, <laughs> you know? And this is as like, thank God I have this. And practicing a gratitude, it's much more through also kind of um, giving what you have, even if it's too small as a plate of hummus, but this was one thing I, 
included at least weekly and literally everyone who knows me around the world. I lived in Italy, Los Angeles, Spain, uh, Holland, uh, Beirut, now in Dubai. They know that my way of <laughs> expressing love and, and, you know, expressing gratitude is through food. This is me. But like you can make even very small things and this is like gratitude for life. Second, time. And when I talk about time, I always talk about procrastination. We always face this, right? We want to make things happen. We, we have a project, we have an idea, we have a goal, we have, you know, like we wrote, uh, write them down, we start the project and then there's this, you know, like silence moment of, you know, you start making your bed or cleaning your stuff or cleaning the home or cleaning the fridge. But why? Because this project is creating stress for you. It's like, it's, it's, it's not any more excitement. And you need, in, 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 first, when, when I'm talking about time and time always connect with pro procrastination to understand that this project is uh, excited. It, it, it's like, I'm excited to do this. Like try to work on your psychology mentally, right? This is what I do at least. But secondly, um, I let sometimes myself procrastinate and sometimes things like we say, okay, I'm going to finish this presentation in two days, but two days is not, are not enough to research, to create the literature, literature, to, um, like, uh, find the nice, uh, uh, pictures, uh, to, I mean, to create it itself. You just put yourself in a very uh, tight deadline that you will not make it and you will get very stressed out and then you're not excited anymore and then you will not make things happen, right? So for me is working with time in a very like slowly but surely, right? Like assess this project, this, like my mountains, I couldn't, I, I could like Joyce, right? Someone else can, could do them in one year or two, but Joyce, as Joyce, with the resources I have, the privileges I have, the technical um, uh, knowledge I had in the mountains, I had to grow them in a way. And I did my, my summits in seven years, but I did them. So who cares, right? Like if someone else did them in six months, good for them. And I would really like get inspired, but this is my way. And every one of us has um, like a, a, a capacities and we should understand that it's okay sometimes someone like uh, I can do a presentation in five days and someone else can do it in three and um, it's okay but the, the thing is just understand your DNA in a way to make things happen I always repeat and this is um, uh, like the goal right third thing physical activity and it's a very important thing that helped me to make things happen in my life. Why? I wake up early and, and when I say physical activity, it's like move guys, move. Yoga, walk, uh, climb your stairs, walk at the beach, walk in the mountains, walk on your street. Like you can just like this body, our body is like um, made to move right? So even 20 minutes, like even when I was writing and finishing my PhD, my thesis, it was like very stressful time. I would give myself 20 minutes of like, I walk around the block and then I climb the stairs twice, seven uh, floors, like 14. And that's it for me. Even I'm an athlete, like it's okay. Like now my priority is finishing my uh, PhD, but I keep my body working out not for just the physical uh, benefit, but also mentally, you know, so uh, my mind would keep focusing. And uh, I practice daily physical activity and, and like depending on the intensity and depending why I am uh, incorporating the, the physical activity during, like in my day, is it to train for Everest? It, it would be um, in a, in a, in a, in a type, in a different type or different training, or if it just, to main, for maintenance and to keep myself active, it would be a totally different practice. And even if I am an elite mountaineer, even if I climb the highest summit of the world, it's okay. If not, if I train all year long, like I am preparing for Everest, 
I will just get into injury and I will not make things happen in my life. So this is very important ingredient number three, energy. When I talk about energy, and this I learned from uh, the mountains, okay? The, the, this is, uh, <laughs> was mentored by the mountains. And when I was climbing the mountains, I noticed that when I get to the summit, it's not the end. There's like two or three days to get back to the, you know, like the safe area on the mountain to the comfort zone or to the city. So, and you know, especially on, on Everest or 8,000 meters uh, mountains, most of the accidents happen while going down. So here, the mountains first taught me how to climb down. I mean, climb is not just going up. It's like you, it's, there's, there's a mastery on how to also go down in life and, and also how to keep the level of energy high while going down, which means, I use not more than 60% to get to the summit. And if I am really burning myself out and I'm getting to 80%, I would just stop and leave the mountain because I will not be able to go down. And to survive, I need to go down. So energy is very important even in our daily uh, life. So if I, I have, I don't know, like depending on every one of us, we have 12 hours, 15 hours where we are active during our day. If I use them every day, like just uh, uh, to stay, to sit in front of my laptop and work, there's a problem here. Like, like how you use your energy and where, this is also very important. So dividing your energy in order to do more things or to go up and down as the mountains told me, this is also a very important ingredient. And this is ingredient number four, five, support. Wow. I think as human beings, we are <laughs> like, we can't live without support. We are meant to live in a community. If we, are, we live alone, I mean, when I say, okay, I'm self-made, it's true, I'm a self-made woman. I did all these mountains with my own feet. Um, but I didn't make things happen in my life alone. And this starts with my brother, George, who is my support system. And you remember, I told you about this syndrome, the hypermobility syndrome, which didn't uh, help me to do sports. You know, like um, if you can uh, read more if you are interested about the syndrome, but like in two words, it doesn't let your, your, your body really do sports. So I couldn't even run when I was eight, like 50 meters in the sports class, you know, at, at the school. So George came when I was around the 13, 14, and he's like, Joyce, uh, I think you should just start uh, using weight at the gym and doing those um, uh, exercises. So George was like uh, into um, sports education and then he got a degree and the master degree in sports management in this field so he was helping me and his help really extended he is my coach actually throughout the 13 years literally he was coaching me to really work um, on every detail of my training uh, program in order to make things happen uh, but here also other than having the expert in your life the support of uh, a friend also when I started talking about my dream on, on interviews with friends, with, with people, and I started to talk publicly that I want to complete the seven summits, I started to gather a bigger support system. <coughs> Sorry. And this support system, I always call them my angels. Um, and because uh, it's, it's beautiful when you believe in your dream but when others believe in your dream and this support system really pushes you into this wave of of uh, and it duplicates huh it gets bigger to make things happen in your life so support system don't uh, feel afraid to ask for help don't feel afraid to talk about your dream to to just raise your voice and and you know like uh, talk about it be confident about it there's nothing wrong if you have a big dream as I did you know especially a girl who wasn't so 
tough physically. Um, so this is the ingredient of support. And here, I, I don't know if you're gonna hear how I am breathing and I'm really scared here. Uh, this, now we're gonna talk about fear and courage, okay? And this will be our uh, ingredient number six. And you can see me here traversing an icefall crevasse. <coughs> Sorry, a crevasse in the icefall in Everest. So this is happening at 6,000 meters. And if I don't cross it, I can't continue. I was super scared. Even after 13 years of climbing, I was super scared. But what made me do it is courage, but not any courage. And, and today, I mean, we're talking about this kind of courage that makes you, you know, do extraordinary things, but I'm not talking about this. I'm talking about everyday courage. Everyday courage to say, this is my project and I'm gonna work another extra two, three, four hours for it, even after my, uh, my I don't know, if you are working from nine to five, even after um, hours, I will just work for it. Every day I'm gonna wake up and work out at 5.30. This is my lifestyle. So I was waking up at 5.30, working out and then starting to work. And sometimes in these 13 years, I had like um, research work at university. So I had to be at nine, for example, at the university or teaching courses. So before that I would do my uh, training and then go back, work on my uh, research and then at night do my PM training because doing this, like seeing this picture, it's not like just happens in your life, especially coming from a girl who didn't, like my joints would never help me to be as, as athletic as another, you know, like person who didn't have this syndrome. So even today, even today after Everest, uh, because I lost a lot of my muscles, mass, mass muscle, I couldn't hike for the first in July and August 2019. I couldn't hike as someone who climbed the seven summits because of my hypermobility syndrome. And I needed the everyday courage to, to wake up, leave my bed and say, Joyce, you're gonna today work baby steps, the turtle steps actually, to get back your muscles and build your muscles. You can do it for sure with the support of, with all the ingredients above, right? The time, the, 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 the support, um, with like procrastination. Sometimes I, I, I really didn't want to do it. And then I had to convince myself that I have to go because it feels bad. Like I was feeling down. Like, I mean, after 13 years and climbing all these mountains, now I can't go for a hike, for a simple hike. And who knows Derby Sama in Lebanon, it's a, it's a just like a few kilometers hike over 600 meters gain elevation. I couldn't finish it. I needed help to get down after climbing Everest. But what I did, I kept training at, and I kept training. And today I'm climbing back again and I gained back all my muscles. And the last ingredient I wanna keep it with you guys is service. And any dream project, objective, any, thing goal you you want to get if it doesn't include include service it that it, it will just not happen somewhere somehow in a way you want why because on the way you are doing it giving back will give you back you know like um and i will tell you this story i started working with himaya and it's uh, it's an association they work on the protection of kids from any abuse uh, back in 2018. And I started this tour at uh, schools in Lebanon. Um, and back then in that year, I couldn't get a sponsorship for my Vincent, which is number six in Antarctica mo mountain. And it was, I mean, Lebanon was going through an economic uh, crisis and it was hard. And I had to choose between going uh, to Europe to start teaching full time and, you know, living uh, my my dream um, and I because I couldn't you know have a full-time job I needed always a part-time job in order in order to do my other job in uh, in the mountains so uh, and I was about to quit literally but 
I took that uh, uh, presentation at the school and one, I, I came to the children and I was giving them this presentation about the dream and everything. Um, after that session, I came back to my um, car and I said, no, I can't uh, give, give up this dream because just the happiness I felt through giving back to, um, to, to, to my society, to my community, to the kids uh, for youth empowerment, because I remember uh, that day a girl, uh, like she's 10 maybe or eight, Rita, and if she's like uh, there, hi Rita, she hugged me and she said, I'm gonna be the second Lebanese woman to climb the seventh summit. It's like choice, wow, like wow, like you, you have this voice to, 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 you know, like give these children, not just in the mountains, you know, other um, hope and, and inspiration to do, to, you know, manage to achieve their dreams. And this is what made me, you know, continue to make things happen in my life. Um, the question, is it too late? It's definitely not after, you know, listening to all this presentation, but if for sure it, it's uh, up to you, but I'm telling you, Every day is a chance to change your life. And every day is like a 0.000001% to make you go forward and you know, to, to make your dream a uh, reality. Today, as I am a mountaineer, I wanted to take a very, I mean, super fast tour around the world. Uh, I will just go very fast here just to see, to, to share with you some pictures around the world. So this is Mount Albers and you can see like how happy I was in Papua New Guinea, um, the majestic landscapes of uh, at the Apennine in Italy, hanging in the void in Papua New Guinea, discovering the Swiss Alps. This is the Mont Blanc guys. Um, the Italian Alps were my mentors. This is where I started going to mountaineering. Uh, Denali National Park was really beautiful. This is the Lotse face uh, while climbing Everest. This is me, by the way, um, here. I mean, I mean here the mask, this is me. This is the oxygen mask at 7,000 meters. Antarctica, the rainforest in Papua New Guinea was really scary. Here, like sharing my journey with the use of Lebanon. This is Rita, so here a picture uh, of uh, this uh, really like, she made me continue doing my project actually. Um, this is a urban planning in um, Antarctica. Um, get, uh, getting awarded the, as a sportswoman of the year 2019 was really an honor just because I followed my dream and I made things happen in my life. The high selfie, but how I did everything, as I told you, it's the strategy of the mountain turtle. I just just like a mountain turtle, I go slowly but surely. I carry my home on my back and my country in my heart. Um, I just wanna say a last word, every dream of, or every project or everything you wanna make happen in your life uh, has a cost. And for sure, you will risk things in your life, you will invest your time, and sometimes it's really dangerous. Like, me, I, I risked a lot. And you can see this in this picture. This is after 25, uh, sorry, 57 days, 57. I wish there was, it was uh, 25, 57 days expedition on Everest. This when I finished everything and I did it. I did, I did climb Everest and I did my seven summits. I accomplished them. Um, I love this picture because for sure it means victory, but I was scared the first time I looked at it because how I could put my body, my, myself in such danger, why? Is it worth it? Like literally, and I heard this like around me, like, is it worth it to do this to your skin? Is it worth it to do this to your body? Yes, it is worth it. If you can see the smile on my face and the happiness I am experiencing daily. It's not about one time, it's about, what the mountain did internally inside of me and spiritually this is why i say yes it's worth it and guys if you have a dream just let's do it like 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 you can do it i'm sure and don't wait to anyone to tell you you are a hero because 
be your own hero. You know that you can do it, whatever it is. It's not just about climbing Everest. Okay. Because yes, you can. Thank you very much. Thank you, Joyce. What a great way to end the 2020, uh, the five forward to 2021 challenge. Actually, I love the mountain turtle strategy. And if we just apply what you just said during your, your session in 2021, I guess we can achieve all our goals. I can tell you, you have many fans on Facebook. They are inspired. They are motivated. They, they you. love your story. And thank you very much. With, with you accomplishing all of this and we are proud of you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Andre, for having me and lots of kisses to everyone watching. And yeah, let's stay tuned. You can contact me on Instagram, Joyce Hazam 7S or on Facebook, LinkedIn. Great. Thank you, Joyce. Have a great weekend and thank you for joining us again. Thank you very much. Bye. Thank you.